So, girls, welcome. So this is gonna be really fun. It can be such a pressure to date. It's like a crazy story, but <laughs> I, for me, this is like... I was going to church because my parents were so <laughs> and welcome to another episode of Girl Talk. Today we are doing things a little bit different and we actually have two guests on the show. Yeah. Woo -woo. Us. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have brought two wonderful guys onto the show. We lost Lady and Beth, uh, sadly, they will be back. Mm. Um, but we have Nathaniel and Connor here joining us and we wanted to bring them on because we thought it's really cool obviously hearing about us girls and our thoughts on um, relationships and all the different things that we've been talking about. But actually it's really helpful I think also to hear what guys think and to hear their perspectives um, on a lot of the topics yes. we've been covering. So we're gonna start by just having a little introduction time. Um, Connor, how old are you? <laughs> and tell me a hobby. Um, Where are you I, from as well? Sorry, yeah. I missed that one. I'm 22 years old. I'm from West Palm Beach, Florida in the United States. Yes, nice. And a hobby of mine is reading. Nice. I like reading a lot. Favorite so book? <laughs> Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. Cool. <laughs> yes. Great book. That's a great book. That's yeah. such a great book. Uh, I'm Nathaniel. I'm 22. Uh, I'm from England. And my hobby is I just love drumming. I'm just quite musical. So, yeah. Nice. Love that. I'm making cool. candles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> quite a pro at it, I hear. Yeah. <laughs> Yet to receive any, though. Something. So. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say, I still haven't oh, received any okay. of your candles. Yeah. I've got a few. Instead. No, I'm just okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is going to be really fun. I think also um, another thing to add is Connor is actually my boyfriend. We are dating, yeah. which is very <laughs> fitting for the topic of conversation because we're going to be talking about relationships. Mm. Um, so to start off with, we're like going to kind of like zoom back to when we were in school. And I want to ask you guys, I think in school, it's super common for there to be a lot of pressure to start relationships. So, I mean, I think not, that, not only pressure, though, but also desire. Yeah. You, you know, like that's also another aspect yeah. of it. 100 um, percent. So <laughs> first question is. Did you feel like any pressure? What I guess just also like what was your experience? Like when did you have your first girlfriend um, in school? Or boyfriend for me. Yeah, yeah. tell <laughs> tell yeah, or boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, so for me, um, I uh, I remember that time in school being quite yeah, quite hard. I did have this desire to have a girlfriend, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think that's because we're made for a relationship. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I remember also getting a lot of slack from my guy friends being like, for me, I didn't have a girlfriend. Like my first girlfriend was 16 when I was 16. Yeah. Um, and before that, and even after that, because that was a very short relationship. Um, I, yeah, they used to call me gay and stuff. And I, yeah. I would feel, yeah, pretty, pretty hurt by that. Yeah. Because when you're young, it kind of pierces yeah, into sure. your heart. It's and, formative. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So for me, that was my experience. And you being 16, like, it's quite funny because you were like, oh, yeah. It, it, did that seem like it was late in life for you to have your first girlfriend being 16? Uh, to be honest, no. That, okay. that seemed pretty kind of like, it seemed pretty early, to be honest. Yeah. I, yeah. In my head, I was like, okay, I'm going to get married when I was like 24. That, let's say something like that <laughs> coming up quick. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> We've got two years, mate. Um, but yeah, for me, that was pretty early. Yeah. Okay. Because mm. it's it's interesting because I think for some people when they hit sixteen, having a first boyfriend or girlfriend, it comes across as like, oh, that's like quite late. For some yeah. people, they were like bullied, and maybe even a little bit before that by their friends, being yeah. like, oh, come and hurry up. Um, and then for others of us, that probably sounds quite early to have. A yeah. boyfriend or girlfriend at 16. Yeah. Um, I did not have a uh, boyfriend at 16. My first boyfriend was when I was 18. But I remember being 14, 15 in school. And even at that stage, I was already feeling a kind of like pressure from my friends to be like, oh, why aren't you dating anyone? Mm. Like, is there anyone you're interested in? Yeah. Um, and a lot of my friends had already had multiple, yeah, multiple relationships by that point as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. I think for, for me, like... Growing up in the town that I did, everybody, like a lot of people got married super young yeah. and started a relationship when they were 16. And so for me, I had that pressure. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to have a boyfriend. Like really, I like my, let me get the, like my parents never pu pushed me to like, you know, you need to be married, you yeah. need to get a boyfriend. No, my parents always advocated, you need to like wait, you know, till you feel like you're ready. But I think my, a lot of my friends were in a relationship, so I felt pressured to have 
a boyfriend. And I was yeah. just like, what is wrong with me? All these questions go through your head. Like, nobody wants me, you know, all these things. But I wasn't ready. When I look, think back at it, and I was just like, thank goodness I wasn't in a relationship yeah. then, so you true. know? It's just like, I was not ready. I was so insecure. Didn't even really love myself. Yeah. So how could I be with somebody, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. that. So, yeah. What was it like for you in school? <laughs> My first relationship... <laughs> My, I never had an official relationship until after I had graduated school. So yeah. I wasn't yeah. in a relationship until I was 19 years old. And so that being said, there was a lot of people that I would, you know, talk with or, yeah. you know, were chatting up when I was in high school yeah. and middle school and things like that. Um, so I, I definitely wasn't like just this pure <laughs> set apart <laughs> yeah. young one for my yeah. entire like school career. Um, but I think for me, I never necessarily got bullied or pressured, but for me, it was more of that desire all throughout right. school. I had this desire. I, I want to be in a relationship. I want to be in a relationship, but I was not decisive enough. I wasn't committed enough. I could never make up my mind whether or not I liked this person. It was always like, oh, is there someone better? Is there someone yeah. that I found more attractive? You know, this, that, or the other yeah. thing. To be fair, I didn't necessarily care too much about the hearts of the girls that I was chatting with. I was Ooh. I was a bit of a, <laughs> a menace back in the day. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I was kind of all over the place, but then at the same time, very afraid of what people thought. So, yeah, I, I never had a girlfriend, nor did I ever kiss anyone until yeah. I was 19. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I okay. think it's interesting how much... I mean, like those years, I think is just so pivotal. Like for me, going from 12 till 16, 17, I think it was some of the most shaping years probably of my life yeah. in terms of like really stepping into who I am, into my personality, yeah. um, into the things that I want in life. Um, and I think some of that obviously it continues happening. Like we're all like growing and yes, learning about yes. ourselves right. now, even mm -hmm. in like early 20s or late 20s. Don't, don't, <laughs> say, my, don't say my age. Do not say my Sorry age. to remind you. <laughs> okay. um, but I think for me that I realized like when I look back also, just like so much like immaturity on yeah. my part, even mm -hmm. in that I was really set that we kind of had a family rule, even that we wouldn't date until we were like 16. We set it for ourselves as kids. But we had this rule of like, let's not date till we're 16. But even before then, I think like I knew there would be people that I'd be talking to, like guys that I was speaking to who were like my friends. Um, and I wouldn't be interested in them at all in terms of like a relationship or starting a relationship. But there was just this like desire for, I guess, like validation, for affirmation, to know that you were kind of seen, to know that you like yes. someone wanted to talk to you, wanted to spend time with yeah. you. Yeah. And I think like, yeah, I look back and I realize like I actually would, um, yeah, get quite close and, and be quite like deep with a lot of these guys, yeah. like friendship wise, like in conversation, um, not really like honoring them yeah. actually, but more just for my own benefit. And, and actually I had a like stage even when I was younger where I was like quite secretive about it. Like <laughs> secretive. <laughs> yeah, a little bit secretive. I remember there was one time where I had like my brother, it was one of my brother's friends and he would like talk to me sometimes and I remember we would like text and then I had this thing where I was like, actually this kind of feels off because I like think I like, all, like, do you know what I mean? Where you're like encouraging someone, building them up. Yeah. And it was like, he was kind of insecure. I was kind of insecure. And so then we kind of feed off of one another's insecurity yeah. and affirming healthy, one yeah. another. Mm -hmm. And I think suddenly I had this moment where I was like, actually like, this is like my brother's friend. My brother doesn't know that I'm talking to this person. This is kind of weird. Yeah. And actually I'm realizing I really don't like him in this way. Um, but it's starting to feel kind of like dependent. Yeah. And so I remember like writing to him and being like, actually, sorry, like I think we need to like stop talking. Yeah. But I hadn't told any of my family. And I remember my brother found out because he saw like an email or something. <laughs> and he yeah. was so upset with me because I'd kept it this like big secret. Um, and I do remember feeling like really ashamed by that because I wanted to present it as if it was like he, the guy was needy. He was talking to me. I had nothing to do oh, with it. putting it all on. <laughs> yeah, but it, but it wasn't. Yeah. It was that I had like a desire to be known and like I was getting as much out of it as he was. And I think that's like, yeah kind of immature and yeah, sucky. Definitely. Yeah. I know I know yeah. for me and what I found to be quite common uh, you know in the ages of 15, 16, 17 is that two people desire something and they want attention and affection from one yeah. another. So they'll both 
feed into that for the other person and it would seem as if it's going to go into a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Though both of them or maybe just one of them knows actually I'm just doing this to receive the attention and the affection. I don't yeah. actually want to enter into a relationship. Yeah. And then that can actually quite hurt yeah. someone. Yeah. Yeah. And I know for me when That's I was so 16 years old, that was all of my interactions with women. Yeah. I never had good healthy friendships with any women at that age and all of my interactions with other, you know, yeah. women of that age was that like I just wanted to get attention from you, get affection from you, but I wasn't actually decisive enough or willing, willing enough to, to commit yeah. to you. I think, I, yeah, I think for myself, like, I remember asking the question to myself, like, you know, like, why do you want to get into a relationship? You know, yeah. and I remember thinking, like, I thought all my insecurities would be gone if I mm. got into a relationship. It would just solve all my problems. And then yeah. I got into a relationship. Those insecurities came with me, and yeah. it was a very toxic relationship. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. just, just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean life is all great or, you know, you're fulfilled, you know? Yeah. And true. I really thought that. And I think that's why you really need to know yourself and just figure out you before getting into those yeah. relationships. That's, that's yeah. such a great thing. I just want to like mm. highlight that, yeah. like check in your heart. Like, yeah. why am I doing this? Why yeah. am I wanting uh, to be in a relationship with another person? Yeah. Yeah. And it is that half-heartedness that I definitely agree with, Connor, yeah. that um, boys and girls alike have of, yeah, just not not wanting a re- wanting a relationship for relationship's sake. Yes. Yeah. And there's no actual real yeah. depth. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. when I'm a, uh, like 15 year old, I didn't really know who I was. Yeah, really. yeah, hundred percent. Like now I reflect as a as a 22 year old guy, I'm like, man, I've changed so much, and I'm actually growing into the man that I'm, I'm supposed, supposed to, be. to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so true. And it's exactly. so different. You know? I think yeah. it's important mm-hmm. also at that age to ask, what is the aim of this relationship? Mm. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I think as a 22 year old now, my aim would be marriage, but as a 16 year old what was my aim when I started to interact with a girl? Yeah. It wasn't so that I would enter into a six, seven, eight year long relationship <laughs> yeah. with them and then maybe get married after it's that. Yeah. It was, I have a desire that I want to be met right now. Yeah. And the reality is, so unfortunately, the reality is that most guys at 15, 16, 17, that is at the forefront of their mind. It's not, wow, I want to love and protect this young woman. Yeah. I want to serve them and love them for the next eight years and then get engaged and start a family. Like that is probably at the, f- the yeah. farthest yeah. depths of a 16 year old <laughs> boy's mind. You know? And so, good to know. Good to so know. It's yeah. important, you know, when we're, you know, 15, yeah. 16 yeah. years old. Entering into relationships or wanting a relationship to, to ask yeah. that question, like, what's the aim of this? Yeah, I remember coming home one time and I was like to my mom, oh, I'm so in love with this man. And then mom's like, do you even know what love is? I'm like, yeah, you know, do I actually know what this actually means? Because it comes with like a huge sacri- sacrifice. Sacri- yeah, sacrifice. Sacrifice. Yeah, sacrifice. Yeah, whatever yeah, that word. You know, so I think like at that time, I'm like, yeah, I mean, to this day, I'm still figuring out what actually love is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I think like what you guys are saying is so true. It, it brings up the question of, Um, And I don't think there's a right answer for this. I don't think that you can kind of have a blanket statement of, oh, everyone should start dating at this age. But I think there is that question of like, well, actually, like, should you be dating Mm. people? Should you have boyfriends and girlfriends when you're 13, 14, 15, 16? And and maybe for some people that's right for them. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? 13, 14, 15, Mm. 16? If you could go back. I mean, I think our comments have spoken for themselves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really, I, I wasn't ready. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, I see a lot of young people uh, that age and I'm, I'm like, yeah, they're not ready either. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's my opinion. Um, yeah. Not saying that all of them are, yeah. are ready or not. But, and uh, I think yeah. it's difficult uh, with mm-hmm. that because we see in movies and in TV shows that there's this, you know, storybook finish to, yeah. you yes. know, High school sweetheart. Walk in the yeah. park. Yeah. Yeah. And that seems like, oh, that's the aim. Yeah. But it, it hardly ever is that. It's but true. I do know, I do know people who started dating when they were yeah. 15 years old and, and now they're married and they have children. So it sometimes it work out. It, it's yeah. really dependent on the two people who are entering into a relationship. But yeah. I think for me, I, I would say why not just wait? Like yeah. what's the point? Why not yeah. focus on who you are and who you're becoming and and building that yeah and, and building that up deciding yeah. who we want to be and, and strive to be the better version of ourselves 
and yeah. then aim to become that person and then enter yeah. into a relationship. I think, but don't you think also like culturally, mm-hmm. there's different cultures that really you do start relationship early. You yeah. know, I think in some um, places, countries in Africa, you start relationship you're sometimes a mother at 14, you know? Yeah. It's, I think sometimes in different cultures are different. I'm not saying that, you know, be a mom at 14. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, if I was a mom at 14, no. I'd get like, <laughs> but, uh, you know? So I think like if you are in a relationship now at 15, yeah. you know, just make sure you have people around you that you have a good support, you yeah. know, and that you are asking yourself, um, asking yourself these questions like, you know, is this a good healthy relationship? And be checking with people that are yeah. older, you know? Yeah. And just to have that guidance. That's and that, great advice. You know? Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I think that's my advice for Because people. I, I think it, it could sound like we're saying if you are in a relationship at 15, 16, that, oh, you're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Well, no. That's not yeah. necessarily no. the no. case. No. It is always dependent on the two individuals who are in the relationship. Yeah. yeah. Where generally yeah. at 15, 14 years old, people aren't ready for yeah. that sort of commitment oh. in order to love yeah. someone selflessly. But yeah. if, if you are in a relationship and it is healthy and it's building one another up and there seems to be a purpose and aim for it, yeah. Yeah. like that was the design for a relationship, yeah. you know? Yeah. And yeah. So, so it's so good to have that if you do have it. But I think even it can be found in relationships outside of romantic relationships. Yeah. Yeah. I know that when I was 16 years old, I had really good guy friendships that, mm-hmm. that were able to push me into becoming a better version of yeah. myself. Yeah, and that was super foundational for me becoming yeah who I am today. Yeah, hundred percent. To have those and, friendships. And I think like if I was to hit on anything, it would be what Nathaniel was saying earlier, which was that whole thing of like if you're in a relationship at thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, whatever age, um, to ask yourself the question of why. Yeah, and that's the most important thing. I think mm. when you can reflect and go, okay, why am I in this relationship? Yeah, is this relationship healthy? Am I in this because mm. I really want to like have relationship and love the person and um, yeah, grow? Like, am I helping this person grow, or yeah. actually are we yeah. just like feeding off of one another in a kind of unhealthy way yeah. because we're both insecure and don't know what we're doing and actually is limiting our development maybe even. Yeah. Um, I think you have to like be honest with yourself and and some of that probably is also getting advice yeah. from people around you and, yeah. and talking to people around you. Yeah, and I think for myself, I was in a very codependent relationship and I think that is very toxic and I think just know, go back to knowing yourself and I think not depending on like if I don't have this person, uh, who am I? Like what yeah. am I going to do with my life? You know, if you're thinking like that, probably best to get out of that relationship, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's so good. So I think like for me, something that I really valued like when I'd kind of worked through some of my uh, immaturity issues, <laughs> which obviously was always kind of a process, you know? Yeah. It's not like it's you true. just like Come go on. like, oh, have one experience and then it's like, oh, I'm out of it and I'm good now. <laughs> like, it was a process. But I think something also that I realized like the older I got that I really valued was having good friendships with guys. Yes. Um, was recognizing, because this is a whole nother thing. Like, in school, I think particularly, there can be such a pressure to date when you're good friends with a person. Yeah. Because Especially. all of your friends start talking about it. Everyone's going, oh, but you guys hang out so much. You get on so well. Why aren't you dating? And I think then it can kind of like feed this concept in your mind. And you're like, oh, well, is it weird for me to be friends with a girl? Like to be this good friends with a girl? Is that like wrong? Should I be dating her? Um, did you guys have like pressure in school ever around those? Yeah, I definitely did. When I was... 17 years old, I became really good friends with this one girl. And it, for probably a year, we would just hang out like quite a bit. Yeah. And we weren't like texting every day and we weren't, you know, dependent on one another mm. for affection, but we would hang out two or three times a week. Yeah. And we would hang out with other friends, but it was quite obvious that her and I were closer than we were with some of the other friends. And that was so good for me in setting a standard of what like a good friendship with the opposite gender should yeah. be. Yeah. It was it was really beneficial because it was the first female friend that I had made where I could actually just be comfortable and like didn't have this goal that I wanted to, yeah. you know, flirt yeah. with them or yeah. date them or yeah. whatever the goal was. Yeah. They were just my friend and I remember having a lot of friends asking, "Well, oh, aren't you going to date? Like, yeah. why don't you date her?" And yeah. I was like, no, actually, that's just not the goal. I don't see her like that, yeah. and it's totally okay that we're like this, and we carried on like that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think so for me, for the longest time, I, when I was younger, 
probably 16, I thought I couldn't have a, a guy friend, just like a guy friend, you know? Because mm. I was, I think, afraid being made fun of, like, oh, like, oh, you just want to hang out with him because you want to be with him, and this pressure, yeah. and people, oh, yeah, there's negativity so much comments, you know? But then I had to say to myself, I'm like, you know what, people are going to judge whether I'm, you know, with hanging out with this guy or not, you know? Yeah. So I think, for me, it's just like, if you do have guy friends, you know, and it's just strictly platonic, like, just, you know, that's okay, like, as long as you know yourself and you're, you know... Yeah. You know, where you two stand. Yeah. Um, but I think that was one of my biggest fears. Like, I had this guy friend, but I was always scared to go out with him, like, like to the cinema or wherever, because I was scared that people were going to think we're dating. Yeah. And that's the insecurity of yes. hearing people's negativity, yeah. you know? And it's interesting, because I think, like, Sion and I are both people who actually, both women who actually say we probably get on with guys generally oh. better than we <laughs> yeah. do girls. Mm. I do. Like, yeah. and, and I think for me, that was always the case. Like, yeah. I always just really enjoyed, and maybe it was, I mean, you have loads of brothers. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I only have two brothers, but I had two older brothers, one younger sister. My younger sister is, like, my best friend. But then yeah. I think there is something of, like, when you have like guys around quite a lot growing up yeah like you're you just like find it very easy to interact with them and, I did, and yeah and easy to understand them I think and yeah. I think there's something also that is like so great about like guys and girls being friends because I think we bring so many things like to friendship that like without like male friends I just wouldn't have someone feeding into my life in that way. Yes. So true. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Do yeah. you want to? <laughs> uh, no, yeah. Sorry. No, I've got a little uh, other uh, avenue. So you, oh, you yes. I think that was part of the thing I loved. I think part of the reason I love, I get on better with guys is, is that like they can like, you know, give me feedback on yeah. certain things. And also growing up with so many brothers, I was so nice. I would ask them questions like, hey, you know, when a guy does this or says this, like, yeah. hey, how am I coming off? Like, you know, and it was so nice. Like, and growing up with brothers and having guy friends mm -hmm. um, when I got over that insecurity not being uh, being able to have friends yeah. uh, guys as friends it was so nice to have them as a kind of bouncing off I um we call it um not ideas but yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah uh-huh encouragement yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> words are just like going off me but yes yeah go yeah on. Mm. yeah no just on a little different um avenue particularly I was quite shy at school mm. and what? for me <laughs> I could easily gain the same validation with someone online. Yeah. Mm. And so obviously now we have the online, the internet. Yes. Uh, and so <laughs> like I remember as a as a young guy, like I was quite shy, so I wouldn't I'd see this beautiful girl at school. Um and I'd be like, Oh wow, she's so cool. I'd be too shy to talk to her. Yeah. But I would be able to talk to her online. Mm. And I would have this relationship relationship online, um, but actually when I see her at school, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't talk to her. And yeah. I yeah. think that's very common, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just want to, like, I just want to speak into that. And I, yeah. I want to say, like, I would, I would say to my 15-year-old self, like, that's not a relationship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Relationship is fa kind of face-to-face -face, yeah. um, your real conversation yeah. Yeah. Uh, instead of can, kind of fake. And can I ask, like, why <laughs> do you feel like, because I think that is so true, because even for me, when I think about, reflect on myself when I was in school, I think there were a lot of guys who wouldn't necessarily talk to me that much in the day-to-day face-to-face, but suddenly it would be like you'd be on Facebook and it's like, wow, they yeah. like always want to chat. Like, why mm. do you think it is that we like like to hide behind, I guess, like the internet or like social media platforms? I think it's just like it comes again with a lot of insecurities within yourself. And I think yeah. it's like... Because I, I think I did that for a little bit too. Online, I could just, do, 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 and you know. So as soon as somebody's looking at you, you're like, you're thinking all these things. Oh, do they like me? Do they? For me, at least, it was like, oh, my eyes are probably too wide or like this. And all these things are going through my head. And so all, like, when it's in person, you know, my heart's like, da, 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 da. Yeah. but behind this, it is kind of like a shelter, you know, that's just like blocking me from there. And it, it is insecurity. And I think that's something yeah. I had to overcome. Yeah. Um, I yeah. know that I did that a lot as well when I was that age. And for me, it We've seemed... all been there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have something yeah. in here. <laughs> for me, it was a, an aspect of control. Yeah. That I was able yeah. to put forward what I wanted to put forward, yes. not yes. what I actually was. Yeah. I was able to control what I was saying, how long it took me to say it, and and yeah. what was being conveyed, you know, sure. down to the T, down to the comma, yeah. down, you know, whatever yeah. it was. It was an aspect of control. And, and it's so mm. true that you have more control and things mm. like that. Because, I mean, I feel like probably we've all been left on the, like, long red 
message Ooh, where true. you're like waiting for a response. You're like, just like I, looking at your time. Like, come on, up. <laughs> I honestly remember being, yeah, like for me, I so much of my, I, I hadn't thought about this, but like so much of my communications probably actually was online. And like even reading into all of those things. I remember when I was 16 deciding that I would never put like kisses, like X's at the end of messages because I realized so many people I talked to like would like read so much into that and that they would like, you'd send like two and they'd send like, you know, three and then you have to send four <laughs> and if you send like three drama. then they're sending less like yeah but it's like we, yeah. we have all these ways of like yeah. communicating and I just remember being like I'm just not going to send x's anymore because I feel like like I'm offending you if I send one less than you and now there's like some sort of like unspoken tension like I don't know you know it's it's so it's, it's so <laughs> it's toxic true. because for me also it's just like okay if I said this long m- message and yeah. then you get one word like okay I'm like oh yeah like it's like so much insecurities go through this and that's why it was so hard for me to like have a relationship through um Mm -hmm. uh, internet or computer or whatever i'm just Mm -hmm. like messages i was just like yeah and it's like if you get much more stop at the end then whoo you in trouble (laughs) (laughs) all right on a serious note though i I have a question where do we draw the line though between Mm. just being a good friend and actually desiring to have good friends of the opposite gender and this might actually be inappropriate to be this good a friend yeah you know, if I'm texting a girl mm. seven days a week for two hours a day, is that too far, yeah. <laughs> you know, if I'm not going to date them or if I don't feel like I should date them? Yeah. Gosh, I, it's so hard, go, isn't go, it? Yeah. Well, because I think, like, for me now, but this wasn't what I did at the time. Yeah. Like, for me now, I would be like, if you're... And I, and I definitely did that. Like, I definitely had people who I was, like, texting them, yeah. like, every day. Yeah. Um, and... I didn't do anything about it. I think I like to just assume that people were like, oh, we're just friends until you say otherwise or until like you, he brings it up. And mm-hmm. I can then just like, I have free reign to like be how I want to be and say whatever I want to say, yeah. um, which isn't cool. <laughs> like, it's not because I think like now as I'm older, like looking back, I'd be like, oh, Naomi, like you should have like what I would call is like a crucial conversation. Like you should <laughs> ask the person like, hey, I Direct. realize like, we talk a lot, like more than most of my friends. We're really good friends. I really get on with you. I realize like we're literally talking every single day. And I just want to clarify, like, are there any feelings here or are we just friends? Because I think if I didn't have feelings for the guy that I was talking to, I never wanted to ask that because I just didn't want to know if they liked me. Right. Yeah. Because then I had to deal with the consequences yeah. of like, yeah. okay, now I'm going to have to kind of hurt you and tell you that I don't like you back. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think commu- like I think you were kind of saying it. It's like direct communication. I think it's like where we at. Like, you know, we've been talking, you know, like you said, seven days a week yeah. sometimes, you know, like we've been talking a lot. I think you just need to assess for yourself. Um, but I think I, I was in kind of a similar, not a similar situation, yeah. but like I was talking to a guy for a bit and then I was just like, okay, like, I don't know him that well, but like, you know, it's asking a lot of personal questions. And I was like, hold it on a second. Is this like, what is this? Like, is this a friendship? Or like, well, you know, I'm, you're asking a lot of, and then it's good to set the, like, yeah, well, this is just friendship. And I was like, okay, yeah. Yeah, good to know. That's good. You know, I think yeah. communication is huge. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, that's so true. And I think obviously it's like one way that you can get around that very easily is like hang out in groups, have like multiple people that you're friends with. Do you know what I mean? Like don't just have like one guy that you're friends with as a girl. And don't be exclusive. I think that's another thing. I think, and that's just in general, like honestly a rule for everything. Because I think we can be exclusive even in our like female, female friendship groups or like male, male friendship groups. Um, And I think just being wary of if you're starting to be exclusive and if it's making people around you feel uncomfortable, yeah. like maybe actually you've gone a bit too far in your friendship and that's something that you guys need to talk about because it's starting to look like a relationship. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yes. yeah. But it is tricky. It's hard. It is tricky. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think this is like brings me on to like probably one of the final questions, which is tied to this is do you think guys and girls can be best friends? Why not? <laughs> yeah. But I think you just have to kind of wait out. Like I said, like, I think once one of you get into a relationship, then it changes. Yeah. I a think, little bit. yes, but here's why. I think all of the guys who have ended up becoming my best friend have also ended up becoming 
at some point, therefore, my boyfriend, which I guess kind of is like going against the question as well. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> but I think like, so I, know, yeah, I know people say that like, you don't want to be in the friend zone. In my opinion, I think the friend zone is the end zone. Like, I think if you want to like date hey. someone, get married to someone, <laughs> like starting off by being really good friends and actually becoming best friends potentially is awesome and like a really cool place to be. I think it would be weird if I was married and I had like, a male best friend who was like as close to me as my husband. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah. that's when it's weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like for me, definitely I'm like, I think you can definitely be best friends with a guy. I just think my experience, it'll probably end up being like my boyfriend or the person definitely. I'm married to. Yeah. 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 yeah, I totally agree. I think it's that thing of, for me and my personal opinion is when you're, so your friends like this and then, okay, I think best friends is kind of leaning in a bit more yeah. and then they're going to lean in a bit more. Okay, we're best friends. <laughs> and the, yes. the, the next thing is like, okay, um, are, are we going to date? And that's yeah. another thing. Yeah. And so it's just that intentionality mm -hmm. um, of relationship. Am, yeah. am I being so intentional with this person that um, it's kind of maybe rising things in their heart. Yeah. It's going to rise things in my heart. For um, sure. Yeah. Just seeing where your heart's at really. Yeah. So maybe not best friends with everyone, but definitely you can have very good guy friends even when you're dating and even when you're married, yeah. I think, mm, which yeah. is awesome. Just making Score. it clear. And make it, yeah. and communication is always a key. Like yeah. Yeah. communicating. Okay, with every relationship. Just really yeah. clearly like, okay, what do you think of me? Just yeah. being vulnerable and <laughs> yeah. like, okay, <laughs> am, I in, am I, are you into me? Am I into you? And asking yourself that question. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that goes to, back to that question of why. Why am I doing this? Why, why are we friends? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Like, why yeah. are we best friends? Yeah. Um, so, good. Yeah. I think it's just important that we understand that language and communication is a gift. It's a tool yes. that we True. need to Amen. use. I think so yeah. often we just hold on to our words. But in friendship, in a romantic relationship, like, yeah. we need to use our words so that we can... I'll be on the same page with one another. Yeah. I feel like and we try... human just communicate, uh, make everything so complicated. <laughs> yeah. It really isn't. Yeah. Just communicate. Yeah. 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 And I say, and try and make it face to face. Yes. Um, <laughs> guys, that is all the time that we have today. But thank you so much for joining us. It's been super fun having you guys on the show. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you, thank thank you for, for sharing us. your experiences and your opinions. And yeah, hopefully this is going to be helpful for you guys, even when you're thinking about navigating friendships or relationships yourself in your yes. life. Um, you know, take what is good, leave what isn't. We're yeah, not yeah. Pros. Yeah. That's so true. So, not pros. <laughs> yeah, we're just talking about it from our experience. Yeah. So mm. it's not so going to be the same thing for everyone. But yeah, yeah, awesome. We'll see you next time.